Most of us have been there. Our friends tell us a bidet is the most awesome thing to ever awesome. Or perhaps you, like me, in 2020 learned that toilet paper can become scarce and a bidet turns less from a luxury item and more to a necessity. Hello, I am Wanderer001 and this is my review of the Bio Bidet Bliss BB1700. This is a, as you suspected, a bidet. There are several makes and models from Bio Bidet. This is probably what I would consider their mid-range as it does not have a remote control as the control panel is actually built into the bidet itself. And it is not just a toilet seat with a nozzle, shall we call it, underneath. This particular bidet has lots of features, which is why you're here to see what those are. To start off, what I will say is there are things about the bidet that I like and things that I do not like. And I'm going to let you know up front, I'm not going to film myself sitting on the bidet. I will tell you a little bit about it uh, and some of the features, but I'm not going to actively be sitting on this. So to start off, you might be wondering just how simple or difficult is it to install a bidet? I will say for myself, I am not a super handyman around the house. However, I have done a few basic toiletry things uh, up there in the corner. I'll stick a couple of cards. This was not terrible to install. So granted, it took a little longer because I was filming it for the review process, but here is what the installation looks like and what you can expect so you can gauge your own comfort levels. Okay, so this won't be the prettiest of setup videos, but when you're dealing in a bathroom, they never really are. So what we're looking at here is the bidet unit itself, the power cord, and then all the included hoses and accoutrements that we need. So we've got our T-valve, we've got a step if we need it, we've got L-valve, we've got our mounting hardware for the actual bidet itself and maybe a cat just ran through the video. So this is everything unpacked as it comes in the box and now we will get started on installing. And lighting in the bathroom is always great and so is echoing so this will be fun. But step one when installing anything that deals with water is first shutting off your water. Once your water is shut off you're gonna come up and you're going to make sure that you empty the water tank Kind of holding down on that to make sure it's completely empty and you should also not hear any water refilling the tank and if you're filming for YouTube always make sure to clean your bathroom first after you turn off your water you're probably going to want to get yourself a bucket or some sort of catch in my case I have a towel down there and in also my case since I'm dealing in a dark area you're probably going to want to get yourself some sort of light so that you can actually see what you're doing after we turn the water off and we get our drop cloth down or bucket. We are supposed to uncouple the hose from our tank. Now you will expect some water leakage and since I'm doing this by myself I'm not actually going to film this and try and work within this very small workspace for me. So you'll see intermittent cuts as I'm doing things. So we're going to uncouple that from the tank. Once you have things decoupled the next step is to use your T-bit here and I'm going to see if I can use the same bit of flexi pipe that I have here connected to the T-pipe that was provided. You can use and replace this if you have something that's older and is not a burst proof one, but since I already have it, I'm going to see if this will work for me. All right, so there you got my T-valve in there. I'm just hand tightening things. So the next step is to take my pre-existing hose and see if it'll actually connect. I did check ahead of time, obviously, before putting that in. So it will match up, so I don't have to use the included hose, just know that you did get a included hose that you could use. So in my case, I'm just going to tighten that back on. So there we go, everything's all connected for me. And let me zoom in a little bit there. Kind of looks like it's pinching the line a little bit, but we're going to see uh, if that'll work. Alright, the next step in order of operations is to remove the toilet seat, but if you follow the instructions that come with, the bidet itself, the toilet seat removal is actually like step two, but I wanted something to lean on while I was trying to get into this little crevice over here for all the water stuff. So we're just going to remove the toilet seat now. All right, so other toilet seat removed. Clean this area just because you're going to be putting a bracket on here. And this part will just go over in here. This is your mounting plate, your little mounting catch plate. 
one for each side. They slip in here and give you a little more leeway up and down and then once this is installed side to side, what you're going to do is you're going to take this plate, put it on the toilet, and then here you have your screw, which comes all the way off like that. This is going to sit on top and then your pieces here will go under your toilet. So where you kind of unscrew things from underneath the toilet seat, these sit underneath and then screw into this, which is in here. And the only reason I'm doing it here is because, well, like I said, it's really tricky to film this and do it in a small toilet. And this is just an example as to why they give you sliding and the ability to move things. So you will adjust this as needed for your particular toilet. So in my case, I just lightly have this one tamp down, I'll do this other one now, but you can kind of shift things, and I know that light is horrible, but you can shift the plate from left to right and then use these up and down to get your holes exactly where you need them. So you can see on my end, I'm gonna have a little hangover of the plate on either side because this is an older toilet, but so still the good. next step is actually to mount this to your toilet, after which it's to install this L bracket, but because this one does not come with a remote and it has the control panel on the left, mounted the L bracket first since I'm working in a very small space. Next step is to click into the bracket. So we're going to take our unit here and just kind of glide it in. We can find where things are. So here's the tricky part. You got to make sure that you're lined up in this little corridor here and then you'll hear it click once it hits this back plate. So we're just going to line everything up and you'll know you did it right if you give it a little tug up and it's not moving and then we're just going to shift it back until you hear that click. So part of the reason you don't mount the bracket really tight when you first start is I had to do a little fiddling and you can't really tell here, but it's not quite even. That's because this weird shaped toilet from the 90s, I want to say. Once you kind of scooch it and you get the bowl looking like you want, and I'm not showing you the bowl because the bowl is horribly stained because the clear coat has been coming off. So I can show you that, but kind of aligning things there means for me the back is crooked. And here, again, like I said, it's really tight in there, which is why I did the L bracket. But next step is to take our supply line for the bidet itself and attach it to the T-valve that we did underneath and then to the bidet itself. All right, it's a little tight in there, but T-valve set up, water supply to the L-valve for the bidet itself all situated. So the next step is to actually turn the water supply back on and make sure there's no leaks because that would be really bad. So we're going to turn it on see if there's any leaks. Now you do want to crank that on very slowly. Uh, like I said, I don't really have room in here to film and show you, but water supply line has been turned back on. I can hear the toilet tank refilling. So we're just going to let that fill up and we're going to check for leaks around all of our new points. And again, I know the lighting is horrible, but now the fun part for me. The power supply is on the right-hand side of the unit to keep everything away from the water. I get that. But for me, my electrical power is up here on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna run something down here and wrap that electrical cord around the back and then I'm probably gonna mount something over there on the vanity. But for the time being, we're just gonna take this snake it around and get my cord going. Okay, so we have things kind of pseudo plugged in. So we're going to take this and plug it in and uh, see what we get. Which would probably help if I turn the power strip on. Sounds like it's filling the tank indicating that it has power. That seems to be really it. There is a sticker on there indicating that you do need to be seated on this in order for things to work. That was installation. We'll see how things go operational wise later on. The last thing that you want to do after completing your setup is you're going to want to make sure that you monitor for leaks. Quick and easy way to do this is just throw down some paper towels, see if there's any drippage to make sure that you're not leaking. Or, if you like tech home stuff, Roost Smart Water Sensor 
just place that underneath and make sure that uh, it doesn't detect any water. Okay, so hopefully you found that helpful. We're gonna now kind of come in here and lighting's not the best, sound's not the best because well it's in a bathroom so this isn't optimal filming conditions. The top of the bidet or the entire seat system is a very kind of not porcelain style plastic so it is going to give you're not supposed to sit on top of the bidet. My cats don't particularly care for it because it is at an angle so even though they're light enough to stand up here they kind of slide off. That is something else that you'll have to get used to. The seat underneath itself is also angled so if you're used to a perfectly flat toilet seat there's going to be a little adjustment for you. So I do miss being able to sit on top of this because this is kind of the room that we would give medication to my cat because he can't run away. So can't do that anymore. Have to use the, uh, the lip of the shower over there. We're gonna come around to the right hand side here because this is where your deodorizer vent is as well as the electrical plug. You can see there, I have to use an extension cord to get it because I do not have a power source down there. I will state that the power consumption from this is a bit more than we expected. In that just idling in power saver mode, it uses 1.1 watts. Once we start getting into some of those features over here on the left, it uses a lot more power. So I will say this right now, if you have this on a shared circuit, you may need to get a designated circuit because for me, while this works right now, in the summertime, this will share a circuit with an air conditioner and I have a feeling that that will blow the fuse. So we don't necessarily want to do that, but uh, just know it's a data point for you going forward. Zooming in, you can see I have three, well, you can kind of see I have three lights there. I have deodorizer, energy saver, and the power indicator. Power indicator will always be on, will always be on. Energy saver, if you choose to use that, that'll turn on, and deodorizer. Energy saver is why this is only using 1.1 watt of power while in standby mode, meaning nobody's actually on it. Back here there is the hot water tank, so this is why it kind of sits out as far as it does. We're gonna open up the lid here kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at. So we're going to zoom in and area in question. On the left you have the actual place where the water nozzle comes out and over here this is your drying apparatus. So this is where your heated vent will be. Over here this is a tank release so you can empty the tank. You can hear the water came back in. If you're going to be away from your house for any length of time they do recommend that you empty the tank. You'll have to turn off the water valve to the toilet and then empty the tank. The toilet seat is a slow close toilet seat, which is great for this, but if you have multiple toilets in your house and the other one is not a slow close, you'll forget. One of the other things with the bio bidet, which is nice, we'll come over here, with the toilet seat closed, you might have small children or pets who will walk along this. Well, guess what? You don't have to worry about this accidentally triggering. This particular bidet requires skin contact in order for it to activate. And in fact, I'm trying to do this while the toilet's lid is down. It won't let me do that. So let me flip that up really quick and then I'll put my hand on the toilet seat. There we go, it turned on. So now these actions will become functional. In fact, you might over here, here the deodorizer just kicked on. Now the deodorizer, because I'm the type of person who tests things, will stay on for about 25 minutes if you happen to be in a bathroom break that takes that long, uh, and will last about 30 seconds after somebody gets off the toilet. So there you can see it has, since my hand has moved. The big thing with a bidet of any kind is actually the functionality that you get. We're going to try and see if I can demonstrate the functionality of the bidet for you. You've got posterior mode, which cleans itself as it comes out. You might notice flickering, and that's the power usage I was talking about. There you can see posterior mode kind of shooting up on me. I'm going to turn that off, and that's going to go back in and clean itself as it goes back in. You have feminine wash mode which again cleans itself and then comes back out and that uses the front nozzle. So there's a third nozzle in the back there for turbo mode but in 
later models, it is actually called Enema Mode. We're gonna stop that. Uh, and I don't think my plastic would hold up to that. And then right there, you have the fan. So we're gonna click the dry fan, which I need to actually touch. Let's see? In order for that to come on, there you can kind of see it's blowing the plastic so you know it actually is working. And if I take my hand off, I'm no longer on the toilet. It turns itself off. So you can also do that by pressing the stop button. A lot of the other functionality that you have here all operate using these buttons here. So plus and minus and nozzle position. So this will allow you to adjust the nozzle position. The lights will indicate the position as well as do you want warmer water. This is your water temperature gauge. So clicking this will cycle you through no hot water, kind of hot water, warm water, very hot water. And again, this is one of those features that is a nice thing to have because well, in the winter time, cold water, not the best. Likewise, with the heated seat, you could cycle through kind of warm, warm, very warm. And just like heated seats in a car, it's a luxury until you have it. And then you wonder how you lived without it. This is the nozzle manipulation mode. So what this will do is this will cycle the nozzle going forward and back. So instead of just coming out and staying in a singular location, it kind of gives you a cleaning motion. This is the auto mode. And what I can best describe that is, is a full wash and dry <laughs> mode. It goes through itself. And then here you have your, your power saver, which I generally keep on because that's what keeps it at the 1.1 watt of power. Each little creature comfort option there will use up a little more of your power. Water temperature, that's gonna use 67.1 watts of power. And keeping it in power saver mode, what that will do is the tank back here will not stay as warm until you sit on it, and then it will really start heating the water in your tank. Heated seat, that's going to be 75.7 watts of power. Your deodorizer only uses 2.5, so that's not bad. The actual utilization of the wash is what really sucks the power. So when you turn on the main function of the bidet, that is going to use 930 watts of power. And the dry at its lowest setting is going to be 586. Now, Again, for me, this was originally a luxury item. Like, all my friends got it and they're like, it's great, but I couldn't justify spending the amount of money that a bidet normally costs. But in the 2020 pandemic, this became a necessity rather than a luxury item. So I managed to pick this up on sale. And I'm not going to tell you the price. I'll leave a link in the description below to this particular model if you can find it on sale. I would highly recommend the bidet. I'm not going to be one of those people who goes, oh, it's a life-changing thing. I will admit it, was, it is not something that I thought about getting in the past, but I'm kind of happy I did. It has helped cut down on the utilization of toilet paper in my household by half. So use that as a metric. Again, other people will say this is a luxury item. For me now, this is more of a utilitarian item to help me save on toilet paper. It can definitely be classified as a luxury item, so depending on which camp you fall into, the Bio Bidet Bliss BB1700, well worth checking out if you can stomach the price. Now keep in mind, a lot of those extra features that I talked about over there, you won't find on other bidet models from other companies. That's what increases the price of this. If you can live without those luxury items, such as the drying fan, the heated seat, and the water actually being warm, then there are other options out there. There are also other bio bidets that are more expensive than this because they have remote controls and things like that. If you can live without those and don't mind having this on the side to control everything, which is waterproof, I will say, because it's sitting right next to my sink and it does get splashed on quite a bit. That's completely waterproof. You don't have to worry about it. Then the bio bidet BB1700 here, well worth checking out. With that being said, I have been Wanderer 001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching, even though this was definitely a weird one to review. Dripping out of the back there. That is because... 
Yeah, no, 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 no. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee. Link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.